Uh, the first step you say is to reorganize. Exactly. Um, including getting rid of those energy drainers in your diet. Can you talk about what some of those are? Yeah. And why? Energy drainers are sometimes the most masqueraded as, uh, you know, it's kind of like pulling back the curtain um, <laughs> because they are the ones that are pushing themselves as energy providers. So okay. you know, I always say, though, be careful of anything that markets itself as providing energy or uses energy in its name because you really have to start to wonder, you know, what kind of energy are they talking about offering? So, for example, if something offers to provide you five, six, seven, eight hours of energy and it's giving you four calories, that's very intriguing to me because mm -hmm. calories are a marker of energy. And when we look at that, we say to ourselves, how am I supposed to get five, six, seven hours worth of energy on four calories? You know, if that mm -hmm. was the case, then all I'd need in the day was 10 calories, you know, if that's what my body needed. So things like that are an issue. Or on the flip side, you might see an energy bar or an energy drink, and they may have one, two, three servings of carbohydrate per uh, their container. And if that's the case and you're consuming it, suddenly you're looking at, wow, I'm getting all of this quick energy from the carbohydrate. Um, my body excess is going to be stored either as fat as well as it's going to shoot me through the moon energy wise and then drop me back down. Mm -hmm. So how dangerous are some of those uh, the five hour energies the energy drinks uh, I think a lot of people look for the quick pick me up even a hyper cup of coffee or something yeah. like that. What do those end up doing in the long run? You know, things are uniquely or individually dangerous. Um, dangerous is a, is a hard word, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard word, but I think it's a very valid one. If I am somebody who is taking antidepressants, if I'm somebody who has hormonal imbalances, if I'm somebody who has blood sugar regulation issues, if I'm somebody who has blood pressure, I mean, I can go on and mm -hmm. on and on. Um, then a lot of those things are going to really be dangerous and negatively affect your system. Um, but I can, you know, I have clients who have told me, you know, I can have a cup of coffee in the afternoon, no issue. I can't have a cup of coffee in the morning without feeling super shaky and then really having trouble by about three o'clock. So it mm -hmm. is starting to get you to know yourself in that space. Um, the issue isn't really how dangerous they are in the moment. It's really how permanent are they in your life. So if you're band-aiding something, look, we all fall, scratch ourselves, band-aids are useful. But if you're relying, you know, if you're walking around with band-aids all over you all the time, you're not really healing, you know, mm -hmm. so there's an increased risk of infection and some of these other things. The same thing happens internally. If I'm always band-aiding, if I'm somebody who cannot get out of bed in the morning without a cup of coffee, then I definitely have an energy issue going mm -hmm. on. And the danger there is whenever we have an imbalance in the body, the body, that's the body's only way of trying to signal you. So if you're falling, like if you can't pick your face up off of the floor an hour after eating, the body is trying to tell you, hey, you know, what you gave me wasn't the right thing mm -hmm. on that part. So I think that's the piece. It's that you're not getting the communication. And then unfortunately, you usually end up in my office or in a physician's office, you know, 10 years down the line, five years down the line going, oh, I have you know, rheumatoid arthritis, or I'm dealing with uh, acid reflux, mm -hmm. or I've got uh, fibromyalgia and such and such, you know? And so um, it wasn't that all of a sudden this happened. It's that you've ignored consistently every single message and you've been trying to band-aid something that actually needed to be addressed. The, a lot of times doesn't it happen where you get into a routine where that first th time, first thing in the morning, you gotta have a cup of coffee, but then it maybe turns into, I gotta have another one maybe at 11 o'clock and doesn't, in the long run, doesn't it kind of kind of build and build from Absolutely, there? yeah. So, you know, what basically happens is is that the higher we shoot our energy, the lower we fall, mm -hmm. typically. Um, sometimes we can moderate it based on if we're consuming fiber or if we're consuming protein or fa healthy fats and that sort of a thing. But typically it's the higher we go and the lower we fall. And then when we fall really low, you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I need it. So that's the issue that mm -hmm. happens. So, you know, I'll say to someone, look, it happens all the time. Okay, I only got four hours of sleep, so I do need caffeine in the morning. Or maybe if I have a greens juice, or maybe if I do go for a run, or I can do something to get myself going, but I am going to need something. But you know what? There's a point in the day when you get through what you needed to do, you've got to physically crash. And what we're so afraid of, for whatever reason, as a society is really this idea of recovery and relaxation. We don't want to fit it in. We don't, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at every culture around the world that has, gets really high marks for longevity, and we're talking about healthy aging there, mm -hmm. we're not just talking about living to be old, but healthy aging, they build in, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through naps, whether it's through long walks, meditation, whatever it is, they build in recovery. It's part and parcel of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's the piece that we're missing. I think that's really key.